Can anybody tell me? Year 2000. All of you are asleep, looks like. What is this question? We are in year 2017. It has been 500 years from the time of Reformation. What do you mean by Reformation and why do you call it Reformation? There, is only, there was only one church on the face of the earth from 380 till 1280. And Bible was available in one language that was Latin. There was a man who was reading the scripture. This man has been confessing his sin six hours a day. Because of the sinful thoughts that he had, the sinful desires and heart, he was confessing his sin for six hours a day. He went to his supervisor, his name is um, Staupitz. He asked to Staupitz, I struggle with so much sin in my heart. How can I fix this issue? He said, there is one cure for your problem. Why don't you read the scripture? He, this man was a monk closed up in a small room, six foot by six foot. That's it, a, a small room. And Staubert asked this question, hey, you are not living in Rome or some you know, live world of pleasure, but how can you really uh, confess your sin for six hours? He says, you don't know what happens in my mind, what happens in my heart. My mind is sinful, my heart is sinful, he says. Then Staubert said, why don't you start reading the Bible? That man started reading the Bible. When he started reading the Bible, he was sent off to a, a Bible college, a, a, a Roman Catholic monk sent to teach the Bible college, uh, teach the Bible in a college, and then he has never read the Bible through and through, and then he was reading Psalms. Well, after he read Psalms, he came to Romans. While he was reading Romans, the Lord opened his eyes to see. The letter to Romans has contributed so much to the Christian history because it is the word of God that can transform lives. Shall we say Amen. The problem of Roman Catholic Church at that time, you know, this is not a pitch against Catholic Church or it's not that we are not against, against somebody. Please don't get me wrong on that. Um, there was a man called Tetzel. In order to build huge cathedrals, they were raising money. And then um, this was what, the, what Tetzel said. When coin rings in the offertory, the soul will jump from purgatory into heaven, he said. When a coin rings in an offertory, the soul jumps from purgatory to heaven. What a heresy. People who don't know the scripture were deceived by millions. People were not even having proper food, but they donated to the church. That they were big, bigger buildings and bigger buildings and really no shepherding. No leading people into salvation. No disciple making was done. Martin Luther, while he saw all that, the, the, the center picture, the three pictures here, the three men of God were saved because of letter to Romans. The leftmost person is Augustine of Hippo. He was the Bishop of Africa. And he came to Christ um, through the letter to Romans. Some other time I'll share about that story. The middle picture is the man Martin Luther. That man is the one who rebelled against Roman Catholic Church. And he said, um, I will quote, the, um, I'll give the quotation in a minute. But the, the last person the, to the right is John Wesley. John Wesley of the 18th century, not from Rajamandri. Um, but this man, John Wesley, is the one um, who was a revivalist who came from England to, um, to, to America, went on a horseback from town to town to preach the gospel and brought a revival to this country. And I will say, I will talk about Martin Luther. Listen carefully, please. He wrote 95 points on a paper, piece of paper, and he called it as 95 Thesis. In those days, there were no bulletin boards. He went to um, a big church in a place called Wittenberg, and he nailed it to the door on, the cast, on, on that uh, church. It says, man is justified by grace through faith reading from Romans. It is not by giving money to church or doing any good deeds. No man is made righteous by doing anything. We are justified by grace through faith alone. Do you want to say amen? I say don't let anyone deceive you because... Oh, you do this good deed, you learn salvation. You go on a pilgrimage, you learn salvation. You give money to the church, you'll get uh, earn salvation. Or you do that, you earn salvation. Romans is very clear. Um, that is the clear presentation of the gospel where you can see man is made 
righteous by grace through faith in Christ Jesus. Jesus finished work on the cross. His death, his burial, his resurrection is our hope than when we stand before him. Charles Haddon Spurgeon was a um, great preacher. And then when he was dying, one young man came and said, Oh, Spurgeon, you lived a great life, right? Um, he said, when you go to heaven, heaven will celebrate. He'd say, I have no celebration in heaven. I have celebration only in heaven because Jesus washed my sin away. And that's how, that's only because I have entrance in heaven. For that only reason, not because I'm a preacher, he said. Do you want to say amen? Everyone who knows Christ as their personal Lord and Savior and for sins forgiven, will have entry in heaven. But this man, it is 500th year of Reformation, 1517, is when he nailed those uh, 95 theses in the month of October, October 31st is celebrated as Reformation Day for that particular reason. Um, he nailed it in 1517, 500 years ago on that. And then uh, that word went to Pope because he talked against Roman Catholic Church. Pope called him into a, uh, into, a, uh, uh, into a meeting, it's called, a, into a place called Worms. Um, there was a diet at Worms, that what it means is, in German, a meeting at Worms, in a place called Worms. And he was asked, will you not take back your words? I want you to listen carefully, please. He said, my conscience is captive of the word of God, and I cannot do otherwise, he said. My conscience is captive of the word of God. I cannot do anything else, he says. May all our conscience be captive of the word of God. Do you want to say amen? Pope said, then you are excommunicated from the church and I'll give a license for anyone who finds you. They can freely kill and no charge will be brought against that person. It's like a shoot at sight order. Martin Luther runs. While running, he wrote a hymn that most of us know. A mighty fortress is our God, a bulwark that never fails. A classic hymn written by Martin Luther. While he's running away, um, one of a prince abducts him, kidnaps him, and puts him in his palace. And he says, to save your life, I kidnapped you. Sitting in the, uh, in the, in the palace, he asked that prince one favor. Can you do me one favor, he asked. Can you bring, give me a Greek New Testament, he asked. Sitting in that palace, first time, Bible has been translated into German. And six months, he finished New Testament completely, and then that's called Luther Bible. Um, uh, for those of you who like to go see museums, Washington, D.C., they are building uh, a huge museum next to Smithsonian, um, you know, for DC next to, if you, they, they call it the, uh, the DC Mall. If you just go, um, you'll see not only the uh, Smithsonian Museums, the, Arab, you know, the, the flight museums, the World War Museums, and next to it be a Bible Museum. Hobby Lobby owner is building a huge museum, three, three levels, on which the Luther Bible will be on display. If you ever go to England, if you go to London, you know, rather than looking at the London Bridge or the Piccadilly Circus or the Circle or look at the, uh, the tower, go to the British Library. You'll see the scriptural, you know, the, the, the artifacts, the, the archaeological manuscripts that were uh, brought out, hundreds of them, of the letters to written Corinthians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians. There are more than 6,000 manuscripts for people to see. The reason why I'm talking about, I uh, just to talk about that one quote, and it's, it's already 500 years of reformation. For your sake, uh, I've just mentioned that. Let's get into God's word. He says, my conscience is captive of God's word. What is this conscience he's talking about? He said, it is not safe for me to go against my conscience. How serious are you about your conscience? Then what is your conscience? Let me share these three truths from the scripture. Firstly, conscience is a testimony that you have inside of you. Um, secondly, um, I'll not dwell much time on this. Um, your conscience can either accuse you or excuse you. Me manasakshi, me me the nero rap, nera aropana chayotsu, lepote, miru nerastudu kadani tirputit sotsandi. Manasakshi manalo nasakshi, firstly, the 
The conscience is the wit internal witness we have. Secondly is this, the conscience can bring a charge against you one day. Thirdly, we should keep our conscience pure and holy, clear. And may the Lord help us to keep our conscience pure and holy. Do you want to say amen? amen. Let's get into God's word. Second Corinthians chapter 1. And then verse 12, this is what the word of God says. Um, turn with me, 2 Corinthians chapter 1, and then verse 12. Um, For our boasting is this, the testimony of our conscience, that we have, we have behaved in the world with simplicity, godly sincerity, not by earthly wisdom, but by the grace of God and supremely so towards you. Apostle Paul is talking to the church. And the problem of the, this, the reason why he writes the second letter, the first letter he writes to solve the church problems. There are several church problems. There are divisions in the church. That's why Paul writes and says, hey, don't think that you belong to Peter, Paul, and all this. You're just carnal Christians if you say that. You're, you should be spiritual Christians rather than carnal Christians, he says. And somebody's coming, and then um, they, are, they are not behaving well for, while they are on the table. He writes about the Lord's table. A man is having a sexual relationship with his stepmother. That's why he writes a very strongly in that uh, uh, in First Corinthians. But the reason why Apostle Paul is writing the second letter to Corinthians is this: somebody challenged and says, "You are an apostle. What is the proof that you are an apostle? Who called you to ministry? To defend his ministry about his calling?" He writes the letter to 2 Corinthians. That's the second letter he writes to Corinthians. He says, I worked amongst you. You see all my life. I lived with simplicity, with godliness, with fear. My conscience is a testimony. My dear brothers and sisters, we all have a conscience. And that conscience will be a testimony. Telugu Mata into the lesser conscience ki? Manasakshi. Manasakshi ante manulo unna sakshi ante. What will this test, you know, conscience be used for? A lot of people say, how, how is God going to judge on that day? Oh, a lot of people think about Judgment Day. If you ever go to Rome, uh, in, the, in Rome, um, if you go to Sistine Chapel, Sistine Chapel is where uh, you'll see all the paintings. And the greatest of the, one of the paintings is the, how God would judge the Judgment Day picture. If you ever imagine Judgment Day, in your, in your dream or in your imagination, it will not be an easy sight, I'll tell you this. A lot of people ask this question, how will God judge people in Amazon jungle who are not civilized, who never heard the name of Jesus? How will God judge people, you know, um, who don't believe in God, existence of God, atheists? How will God judge people in the remotest parts of India or China where they have never heard the name of Jesus? Romans chapter 1, turn with me please. Romans chapter 1, for those, you know, if you have a question, how will God, you know, talk, judge about people on that day, how, how is he going to talk about atheists? Or those who never heard the gospel. Romans chapter 1 verse 18. Uh, I'll read for, for all of our sake. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness. And unrighteousness of men. Who for the unrighteousness suppress the truth. For 19 says. For what can be known about God is plain to them. Because God has shown it to them. For the invisible attributes of God. That is, his eternal power and his divine nature have been clearly perceived ever since the creation in the things that are made. So they are without excuse. No man can say, I don't know who you are before God. God's wrath, God's anger, Devuni Ugrata, Aina Kopum, Bhakti Hinulamida, Bhakti Hinatamida Why? Because they suppress the very truth of God. How can anybody suppress the truth of God? Look at what the word of God says. 
Verse 21, although they knew God, they did not honor him as God. If you don't really worship God, you are suppressing the truth. Your conscience says there is God. You don't worship him, you don't give him the glory that is due to him. If you don't really pray, kneel down and say, Lord, I surrender my life to you. That means you are suppressing the truth. Only true worshippers are being obedient to their conscience. Their conscience says there is God. A lot of times, you know, atheists um, rebel against God. is not because they don't know that there is God. Ronald Reagan uh, was the president of this country. You know, that Ronald Reagan's son. I think many, a uh, couple of years ago or three years ago, I showed you a 30-second 30, 30 video that was on YouTube. Uh, the son of Ronald Reagan is a president of an atheist organization. You know what he said? He said like this, we don't believe in God, but I'm not afraid to burn in hell, he said. I don't believe in God and I'm really not afraid to burn in hell. My question is, does, does he really believe in hell now? Yes or no? Yes, right? He says, I'm not afraid to burn in hell. Many of the atheists, it's not that they don't know God. It's because they don't want to bow their knee to him nor confess that he is Lord and Savior. If you set Jesus as the Lord of your life, you need to listen to what he says. You need to surrender. You need to humble. You need to come and receive. There is salvation in no other name except the name of Jesus. Do you want to say amen? There is no other way you can be saved. As I talked about that, that, that Martin Luther, can you put the picture again? He is the one who talked again the Roman Catholic Church. The second picture is that. He said, you know, only by faith alone you are saved. That is called sola fide. He said like that. And by grace alone, it is only by God's grace alone we are saved. He says sola gratia. He says by Christ alone, meaning sola Christos. Only Christ is the savior. There is no other savior. Don't trust your good works. Don't trust anything else. And he says, revealed in scripture alone. As I told you, he sat in that, uh, in that palace, translated the Bible to German. First time Germans read Bible in their own language. Indians, we never had Bible till late um, 19th century. After William Carey came, before William Carey, there was one man, Bartholomew Ziegenbach, who was a Dutch missionary to, to the Tamil people in Travancore. He translated parts of um, New Testament. He, he translated New Testament to, um, to Tamil. Tamil is the first language to have a Bible in, in India. And later, um, William Carey translated to 38 languages, out of which 18 full languages. Um, Bible, he translated 18 full languages, full Bible into 18 languages. 38 partial Bible, not, not fully. You think about how God used, and we receive the scripture, when we read the scripture, we should understand that we, are, we can have only relationship with God, not because of, um, by good works. As I've said before, you know, the, the tragedy of Roman Catholicism is you give money to the church, and your dead father, grandfather, great, great, great father will jump from purgatory to heaven. Remember that statement of Tetzel, he said, you know, when the coin rings in the offertory, the soul will jump from purgatory into heaven. What a heresy. What a heresy. We are saved by grace and, of, and death and burial and resurrection of Christ Jesus and faith in him alone. Do you want to say amen? Please, if you understand that, you understand the gospel. Then when a person comes to Christ, you have a new, new conscience, clear conscience. But keep, learn to keep our conscience holy before God. You know, the, this verse we have said, conscience is a testimony. God is going to use conscience to, you know, uh, to judge people on that day. You know, you, don't, you can't say, Lord, I don't know whether to do right or wrong. Let me ask you one question. Um, lie detector test. Can, you, can anybody find out if you are telling a lie? Yes or no? How can you find out, brother? Excellent. Your heart rate goes up when you tell a lie. Some even have mastered the skill. 
బీపీ బెరక్కుండా కదలకుండా అబద్ధం చెప్పేలా ఉన్నారండి అవునా దే ఆర్ రియలీ మాస్టర్స్ అట్ ఐ హ్యాడ్ వన్ సిస్టర్ కమ్ అప్ టు మీ నాట్ నాట్ ఇన్ శ్రీకాకు బాయ్ ఫెలోషిప్ అండ్ సిస్టర్ ఐ డోంట్ నో వై యు నో దీస్ కిడ్స్ ఆర్ గ్రోయింగ్ అప్ హియర్ అండ్ ఐ సీ దే డోంట్ బ్లింక్ అ మినిట్ బిఫోర్ టెలింగ్ అ లాయ్ i said how can hard become so hard i tell you hard become so hard that's why he writes hebrews and he writes so much against sin and says make sure no one has a evil and unbelieving heart because of sin he can become like that if a person keeps on sinning their conscience becomes let me give you an illustration conscience is like a white slate you can write on the white slate so much with a black ink that you cannot even see that it is white slate our conscience is like that god has given you a clean slate keep to try to you know take pains to keep your conscience clear before god and man because god is going to ask because if you spoke any word against somebody the lord is not going to only even see the words but he's going to see the motive behind it if you back bitten somebody or if you attack somebody if you stole something from your office you're fighting with your spouse or you are behaving badly with your children you know all that happens in a home at office you know in your personal life where nobody sees god is a god who searches hearts god is a god who searches minds and he will use our conscience to be the witness on that day when he judges may the lord give us grace shall we say amen that we may keep our conscience clear quickly and i want to move to romans romans chapter 2 turn with me romans chapter 2 and then verse 12 onwards he says for all those who sin romans chapter 12 2 for all those who sin without the law will perish without the law and all those who sin under the law will be judged by the law for it is not the hearers of the law that are righteous um before god but it is the doers of the law that are righteous before god um verse 13 for when gentiles who do not have the law by nature wonder what they do what the law requires they are a law to themselves verse 15 for they show the work of the law written on the hearts while their conscience bears witness to do something we already know their conscience will bear but it will accuse or excuse letter to romans is a wonderful letter i i will encourage you i think two years ago we had that as a part of our convocation and our children memorized the entire romans 8 the 39 verses it's a wonderful letter to read it's not just a book it's a letter written to a church that um paul did not visit yet um paul wanted to go there as a preacher but he goes there as a prisoner if you want to remember the outline of romans remember these four words please the first three chapters talk about sin Paul is meticulously talking about everyone is sinful and how God will judge about that sin and then the next uh, chapter 4 and chapter 5 he talks about salvation and salvation comes through faith and he uses Abraham as an illustration Romans 4 sin salvation and then he talks about Romans 6 7 and 8 about sanctification meaning how you can be made holy your struggle with sin in a daily life how the chains can fall away if through the spirit you put to death the deeds of the body you will live he says in romans 8:13 because the holy spirit lives within you to be the helper if anyone does not have the holy spirit he does not belong to god only proof that you are born again is the spirit of god within you remember that please that is the gist of romans 8 so sin salvation sanctification chapter 9 10 and 11 is about israel but when he talks about from 12 to 16 he talks about how to serve god he says i beseech you brethren by the mercy of the living god that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice holy and acceptable to god which is your reasonable service as king james other translations say which is your spiritual worship your service starts by giving yourself as a sacrifice while writing to that he says like this listen carefully on that day the lord is going to make you stand as a part of a friday bible study at naperville we were sitting down um just last friday um we had a we had a discussion um there was a video shown um we, we talked about this at the end of the service we talked about can really god show somebody if god would really give a glimpse of heaven and hell your prayer life would change 
there was a lady called Mary Catherine Baxter. And to her, um, the Lord allowed uh, through a vision to let her see how hell looks like. And she exactly confirmed what, she, what was spoken in the scripture. And then uh, um, the, the discussion was this. While, while seeing some things, you know, the, uh, one of the, uh, she saw there, there was a place where all the books in heaven were held about people. It says, go tell the people that God is writing every word, every action, everything that people do. Okay, don't believe her because, okay, we should not believe if somebody goes into too much detail about, you know, their visions. I'm not saying we should believe everything that you hear from people. This is the final answer. Do you want to say amen? If, you, if we get back to the scripture, that was Reformation was. Turn with me, please. Matthew chapter 12 and verse 36. Matthew chapter 12 and verse 36. This, look at what the word of God says. You know, what is in heaven? Um, you, we can see this. Matthew chapter 12, verse 36. Is, I tell you on the day of judgment... The people will give account of every careless word they speak. Oh Lord, help me to be careful about the words I speak. You know, Christians can become so careless, gossiping, backbiting, telling lies. You know what happens? Your conscience is seared. Your conscience is already bearing a witness. You're speaking a lie. You're speaking a lie. You're speaking a lie. We have to give an account of every word we speak, every hurtful word you speak to your brother, to your friend, your, your sister, your children, your boss. We speak a lot of unnecessary stuff. I'll tell you, the Lord says, every, these are words of Jesus, not mine. Matthew 12, 36. Lord Jesus will bring about every word. Or you might say, oh, I'm guilty about that. How can I get my conscience clean again? We will come to that part in a minute. Oh, I want to have a clean slate now. My slate is all dirty. The white conscience is dirty now. I want to make it white again. How can I do that? I'll we'll come to that in a minute. Revelation chapter 22, the last, the last chapter of the Bible. Revelation 22, verse 12. I want to look at, look. They said, the, the Lord talks about a paycheck there. He, Behold, I am coming soon, bringing my recompense. In Telugu, the word recompense is there. Vani, jitam onutari. Jitam ini dah ni ke Yesus Prabu Tiri Gustun ada entah ni. Oh, ini lokal ni jita orang tu dah ni kita paralok orang lagu jita orang tu dah ni kuntu nara meh meh. Yang jita orang tu dah lsa. Manusia sena paralok tu mana mana kocce blessing ikat lagi dah ni full gak cuci sedu mana. Ini jengga Prabu sana dulu paralok orang lagu cuci am cuci am. Prabu ane jita ni patkan nista ada entah. Revelation twenty two twelve says like this. Behold, I am coming soon. I am bringing a paycheck with me to repay everyone according to what they have done. The Lord will ask what you have done. Listen carefully, please. We talked about the uh, Lord's return many times. Yesu Prabhu When he comes back, you know what he's going to do? He's going to sit on a glorious throne. He'll separate the sheep from the goats. And to the sheep, he will say, come and inherit the kingdom that is prepared for you. Matthew chapter 25 talks about three different stories. Two are parables. One is the real event. One is the parable of ten virgins. Second one is the parable of talents. Third one is the glorious throne judgment. Jesus will sit on the throne. He will gather the nations. He will separate the sheep from the goats. He will say to the sheep, I was hungry, you gave me food. I was thirsty, you gave me water. I was naked and you gave me clothes. I was in the hospital, sick, you visited me. I was in the prison, you visited me. And then the righteous people will say, Lord, when did we do this to you? The Lord says, as you have done to the least of my brethren, you have done it unto me. You see the point? The Lord will judge your works and my works when he comes back. How is our life? How, what is our conscience talking about? Are we living for ourselves? Are we living for the Lord? Yentasepu self-centered lives, man, Nino, Napilano, Naujago, Nakutumo, Inte Prabhanu, Inchevanta, Nikorji in Sarnakuni. Ashil is monk. As City Stud said, only what you do for Christ will remain. What you do for yourself will not remain. 
ప్రభ నీతిత్వాన్ని చేయడానికి నాకు సహాయం చేయని ప్రార్థన చేసి వాళ్ళు చాలా తక్కువ అండి దావీదు ప్రార్థనలు నేర్చుకుంటున్నాం మనం ఇస్ స్టీచ్ మీ టు డూ యువర్ విల్ ఆఫ్ గాడ్ మై ఫుడ్ ఈస్ టు డూ ద విల్ ఆఫ్ గాడ్ యూ సెంట్ మీ దాట్ ఈస్ అ స్టేట్మెంట్ ఆఫ్ జీసస్ వీ డోంట్ హ్యావ్ దట్ కైండ్ ఆఫ్ ప్రేయర్ లైఫ్ ప్రభ నీచిత్వం ఏంటో నాకు చూపించు వాట్ ఎవర్ ద కాస్ట్ ఈస్ ఐఎమ్ గోన్ టు డూ యువర్ విల్ వీ నీడ్ టు బీ లైక్ దాట్ otherwise on that day when you stand our conscience will accuse us ina ana korge jeevinchadu jeevitham anta self centered life he is not really um careful about his money he is a spendthrift mana mana sax cheptundante he is a lazy fellow mana mana sax cheptundante he did not deal with his spouse or children properly or she did not deal with her spouse or children properly mana manasakshi aro sakshyam isthe manaku vetrekanga sakshyam isthe you know court case let me ask you um how many parties will be there in a court case two parties um what are the two parties called huh yes plaintiff and defendant plaintiff is the one who is bringing a charge against another person is called defendant there will be a judge and then from a plaintiff there will be a lawyer and advocate and he is the one who is pressing the charges he'll make sure that he is bring a charge against the defendant and there will be a lawyer for the defendant and he wants to defend the person and says no 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 these charges are not right but the judge will be sitting at the judge seat you know there will be a court case up there you know who will be standing as a defendant you and i నేరస్తుడిగా బోన్లో నిలబడతామండి ఆ నేరారోపణ ఎవరు చేస్తారో తెలుసా మన మనస్సాక్షి ఈడు పెద్ద దొంగ అండి ఈడు పెద్ద అబద్ధికుడు అండి ఈడు పెద్ద తాగుబోతండి ఆ ద విట్నెస్ విల్ బీ అగెన్స్ట్ అస్ ద ప్లెయిన్ టెఫ్ విల్ బీ ద వెరీ కాన్షియస్ కాన్షియన్స్ విచ్ గాడ్ హెస్ ప్లేస్డ్ ఇన్ అస్ ద కాన్షియన్స్ విల్ ఐదర్ అక్యూజెస్ ఆర్ ఎక్స్క్యూజెస్ but if you know christ 1 john 2 1 says i write to you dear children that you may not sin but if anyone sins we have an advocate ekkada court baita gaadu court lopala sitting at the right hand of the father india la chaala matta court case court court case unte baita chaala mandi wait chestu untaru every lawyers nikke emana case unda i will give you one chettu kinda pleader antaru jaami meer chusi untaru chaala mandi atla you know the lot of advocates who will be ready okay what is your case what is your case what is your case can i plead your case can i plead your case i'll tell you we have a lawyer sitting at the right hand of the father that is christ jesus if you've sinned there is a way we should come back that we may not be accused on that day but the lord when we stand the lord says this is my child washed by the blood of christ wearing a white garment before him washed in the blood of christ jesus and how can we really keep our conscience Uh, clean i want to talk about two things um acts chapter 24 and verse 16 we have read these words many times but i want you to uh, look at it please acts 24:16 apostle karyam 24th chapter 16th verse apostle karyam 24th chapter 16th verse um apostle paul says like this um standing before felix he says this word he is actually standing in a in a in a court case in that court case he is defending himself and he says like this i always take pains to have a clear conscience before god and man and then in king james if you read you know what it says i will make sure that i will not give offense to god or man vai elanti jeevitham andi devuniki devuna drushtilo abhyantaram leni jeevitham manushula drushtilo abhyantaram leni jeevitham a man who wants to be clear in conscience towards god and towards man if you are not careful about that i want to be clear toward have a clear conscience towards god that god may not say oh look at your own conscience oh what is conscience before men dani kuda vaddamandi um i want to give start off with an uh, example you know samuel was a man who lived the prophet samuel in the old testament he lived a spotless life there are very few people who lived a spotless life um it's not that they did not have the original sin but you know they 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 strive to be sin uh, blameless it's not sinless being but blameless 
A few of those, like Daniel, like Joseph, like, uh, uh, like Samuel. Samuel, at the end of his ministry, you can read that story. After he puts his sons to be the judges, Holy Israel will come and say, your sons are not behaving well. But he, when, he's, uh, when he becomes old, when Saul is anointed the king, he says, I am asking you, he gathers the whole Israel before him and said, I have led all these days, now you have a king. But before I say my goodbye to you, I am asking you if I have sinned against any one of you, if I have taken a bribe from any one of you, if I have taken a donkey or a cow to just pervert the justice, bring a charge against me. I want to restore it back to you. What a life it is, right? At the end of a life, man is stuck standing before a whole nation and said, I am standing before a whole nation. Why is he striving to do that? He wants to keep a, have a blameless life when he stands before God. We don't strive for that. There are very few people who strive for that. Oh, we are so satisfied. I'm sad. I'm cleansed by the blood of Jesus. That's it. Never strive to live a blameless life. We have to be holy as he is holy. Lord, keep my conscience clear like that. Second Corinthians chapter 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. And then I want to read 1 and 2 after I read that. My brother Pratap, can you please uh, turn off the recording, please? 2 Corinthians chapter 4, um, verse 1 and 2. After I read this, you can turn it off. Therefore, having this ministry um, by the mercies of God, we do not lose heart. You know, ministry is God-given. Do you want to say amen? Ministry is God given. You don't grab ministry. You don't need to be called by called to serve the Lord. Hebrews 5 4 says, No one takes this honor upon himself unless they are called. You know, it is God who chooses people to serve him. Psalm 65 verse 4 says like that. Um, Blessed is the one whom God chooses to bring near. Ministry is God given, God directed, God empowered. It is not you can grab ministry or take hold of things. And then look at what verse 2 says. We have renounced, 2 Corinthians 4, 2, but we have renounced disgraceful and underhanded ways. We refuse to practice cunning or to tamper with God's word, but by the open statement of truth, we would commend ourselves to everyone conscience in the sight of God. The word of God says that we have renounced everything which is shameful, everything which is disgraceful. Um, Hebrews chapter 10. Turn with me. Hebrew Patrika Padajan, we don't watch them. Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 22. Um, 21 says, For since we have a high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart, in full assurance of faith, with our hearts sprinkled clean from evil conscience, and our bodies washed with pure water. He says, let us draw near with a true heart, full assurance of faith, heart sprinkled clean. How can you keep your from evil conscience? Let us hold fast to a confession. You know, last week I've shared about the reasons why we should gather. What is the reason why we gather every Sunday, every Friday, or other times? But here, when we draw near to God, Ecclesiastes 5 1 says like this Be watchful of your conduct when you go to God's presence. It says, It says, When you draw near to God, make sure He says in Hebrews chapter 10 and then verse 22, Let the, your, you may not have any evil conscience. If your, if your conscience is talking against you, what should we do? John talks about it. Your own heart is talking. Um, you know what the devil tells Christians? You are so sinful, why will you go to worship? Sit down at home. These are the words of the devil. You're, you fought already in, at home. You fought with your friends. You are going to worship the Lord. Do you think God is going to accept your worship? What should be your response? If your own friend says that, if your own spouse says that, 
Oh, you're going to church as if you're a saint? You have this kind of lifestyle, you're going to church? Let no one stop us from coming to his presence, sitting down in his presence. Do you want to say amen? It is Satan and sin that keeps you from coming into the presence of God. But if you ask, Lord, I want this conscience to be clean. The Lord will make you clean from evil conscience. If your own heart is accusing you. 1 John chapter 3, I want to read this, please. This is an important struggle, and this is the lies of the devil. Um, 1 John chapter 3, um, and then verse 20. These are the lies of the devil. The devil will stop you from people from coming to God's presence, from praying, from worshipping, from sitting in God's presence. Oh, no, the the 1 John 3.20 says like this. For whenever our hearts condemn us, God is greater than our hearts and he knows everything. Beloved, if our hearts does not condemn us, we have confidence before God. And whatever we ask, we will receive from him. Because he will keep but we, because we keep his commandments and do what pleases him. If your heart condemns you, come to Christ, ask him to forgive you. you. When you come to God's presence, make sure that your conscience is clean. Quickly, a couple more verses and we're done. Hebrews chapter 9. Hebrews chapter 9. So every, not only you come to present God's presence like that, you know, that's why prayer is gone in many Christians' lives. Because their conscience is, has, is defiled they're, because their conscience is defiled, they don't even pray. They don't worship. They don't come to God's house. That's why you get right with God. Secondly, you know, oh, I'm serving the Lord, but still my conscience is not right. How do I serve God? And blameless Hebrews chapter 9, and come to verse 14. Verse 14 says like this, How much more the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without blemish to God, purify our conscience from dead works to serve the living God. This manasakshi, this sakshom, it go papa ne ki parihar ondi. See, because of he did this wrong, or she did this wrong, look at the blood of Christ. The blood of Christ will cleanse us. You know, coming to Jesus, coming to the cross is not just one day for our salvation. I'll tell you, sinner's prayer, leading people unto Christ, those are all just the worldly stuff. The real being born again is the work of the Holy Spirit in a person. We cannot lead anyone into Christ. It is Holy Spirit who can lead a person to Christ. We can pray for them. If you are really burdened for somebody, weep and pray for them. And they will be saved. How can we serve the living God? The Word of God says like this, Purify our conscience from the dead works. There are so much of dead works in our lives. Those dead works have to be taken away. They only have to be taken away. Say if I'm giving five bucks to a homeless man, go to McDonald's, buy a five, five bucks meal, and give it to that person, um, give that person the, the meal, and then take a picture. And I put it on Facebook. And I'm counting how many. What is this? I went to Fremont one day. Um, California, um, one of my friends said, hey, drive, drive by the headquarters of Facebook. I went by the drive by Facebook, headquarters of Facebook. The, do you know what the front officer says? It's like this. Everybody's coming and taking selfies with the, with up when, but God, the Lord says, oh, you're taking a lot of thumbs up, but this thumbs down for you. No, your life is not approved. Our conscience needs to be clean. When we stand before the Lord, the Lord will say this. He will see the motive for which I took a picture and posted on the Facebook. If I'm doing something as, a, as for the Lord's service, if I'm just doing it for the recognition's sake, God sees the motive behind it. So don't advertise your good works at all. It is for the Lord to see. There we are dead works. There are so much dead works in our life. Where God will say, no, this I can't count. No, this I cannot count. You have did this for with a wrong motive. May the Lord help us to see that we have only one motive to please him and him alone. Do you want to say amen? We should come there. Say, I don't care about what others think of me. I am not here for man's approval. 
I'm here for God's approval that he may look at my life and say, yes, you lived a blameless life. There are so many dead works. We need to get rid of dead works in our lives. Lord, show me what are dead works in my life, that I'm thinking that I'm doing this for you. But the Lord may not count it that day. The Lord doesn't yet count it that day. He wasted our time. Waste our, if you live 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, 50 years, you, what you speak, you cannot take back. What you have done, you cannot change. What is recorded in heaven, unless you repent and say, Now, Lord, help me to live a life to keep this conscience. Don't corrupt the word of God. Don't go against your conscience. As Martin Luther said this, My conscience is captive of God's word, and I cannot go against my conscience. It is not safe to go against your conscience. Your conscience, Nilo Nasak chapter ending. You did it for a wrong reason. So whatever you do, do it as unto the Lord, not unto men, not as I pleasers, not as people pleasers. Colossians 3.23 says that. Ephesians 6 talks about it. Do it as unto the Lord. And that work will remain. That work will remain. And not for the work that is trying to get people's applause or satisfy myself with the wrong things. You know, if we keep on doing like that, the conscience can go from a good state to a, uh, to a seared state to an evil state. Lord, let not my conscience go to that bad state. అని మనసాక్షి చెప్పడం మానేస్తాడు మనిషి మనసాక్షి చెప్పడం మానేస్తే ఇంక అంతకన్నా దరిద్రమైన పరిస్థితి ఇంకోటి ఉండదండి దాట్ ఈస్ అ టెరిబుల్ స్టేట్ యూ క్యాన్ బీ ఎన్ వేర్ యువర్ కాన్షియన్స్ ఈస్ నాట్ టెలింగ్ యూ దట్ యుర్ డూయింగ్ రాంగ్ యు నో వై వీ నీడ్ టు ఫోకస్ వీ ఐ నీడ్ టు బీ సెన్సిటివ్ టు సిన్ వై షుడ్ బీ సెన్సిటివ్ అబౌట్ ద వర్డ్స్ అవర్ సైట్ అవర్ యాక్షన్ ఈస్ యూ నీడ్ టు కీప్ ఇస్ ఇస్ క్లీన్ సెన్సిటివ్ Somebody asked this question, oh, what is the problem with watching, you know, playing violent video games? MW3, Call of Duty, this and that, violent video games, it's like a warfare. It is to train people for warfare, for soldiers. But if a little kid plays the violent video game shooting, he'll have no sensitivity for that. When he takes a gun, when he's shooting, he doesn't understand there are people who are dying, that he's taking lives. What is the problem with this country? 59 people lost their lives two Sundays ago in Las Vegas. They don't know how to use guns. You know, why is it coming? Because the sensitivity is lost. We should work for ourselves, for our children is this, that they may be sensitive to the Lord, sensitive to the prompting of the Holy Spirit, that they may stay away from sin, keeping their conscience clear. Lord, help me, we should pray. Shall we bow? Is your heart condemning you today?